Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Chiwi Tan and welcome to this masterclass in the module Health Related Activity and Fitness. Now you may have seen it in your office or one of your family or friends may already have one. They sit dominantly on your wrists, ready to clock any movements that our body makes. Now for the more expensive versions, we can even do humble brags of our achievements on social media. Yes, I'm talking about the most almost ubiquitous physical activity monitor or Fitbit, as some of you may call it. No, you, you may even own one. So using this little device, we attempt to measure our own daily physical activity. But the question is, can we really trust it? Now, how accurately or reliably does it measure our physical activity? Are there actually better ways of objectively measuring our physical activity? Now, to help us understand some of these um, questions that we have, we have a special guest today with us. That's Dr. Philippa Dahl. Hello. Now, Dr. Dr. Dahl is a senior research fellow in the School of Health and Life Sciences at Glasgow Caledonian University. Her background is in physics and engineering. Her current research interest is focused on the objective measurement of physical activity and sedentary behavior in a free living environment for certain populations, for example, office workers and call center staff. Now, this also includes the development of novel data analysis techniques and their application to certain populations like the elderly for upper limb function, for wheelchair use, and in the rehabilitation setting. Now, she was involved in the development of the 2019 uh, United Kingdom Chief Medical Officer Physical Activity Guidelines and is currently a member of the UK CMO Expert Committee for Surveillance, advising the Chief Medical Officer on future directions or surveillance of these guidelines. Hi, Philippa. Hello. It's great to have you here with us. Now, so before we have a chat about measuring physical activity, first, can you tell us what exactly is physical activity? That's a very good place to start, Chiwi. The World Health Organization defines uh, physical activity as any bodily movement produced by skeletal muscles that requires energy expenditure. So that's quite a, a, a wide definition of things that count as, as physical activity. I might be sitting here drumming my fingers on the desk and that is physical activity. But for most of us, when we think about physical activity, we're thinking a little bit about the more global physical activity we might do, the, the, the more high energy things, a bit about exercise, about walking um, around. So I wanted to also introduce a couple of other terminology about measurement. Okay. So I mentioned exercise just there. Mm -hmm. um, exercise is a subset of physical activity. It has um, a number of definitions where people say um, it's, it's generally planned, it's regular. Well, sometimes it ought to be regular. Um, <laughs> and it has the aim of improving physical fitness. Um, so not all physical activity is exercise, but all exercise counts as physical activity. The reason we're interested in physical activity um, and exercise is because it's related to health. I'm not going to go into that uh, in detail. And indeed, um, because I have an engineering background, um, there's other people who would be much better at doing that than me. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a, a little bit of a complex relationship. It's not straightforward. Um, and you'll find, say, the UK physical activity guidelines um, include components of aerobic physical activity, of reducing sedentary behavior, sitting, of um, muscle strengthening and balance. And all of that counts as physical activity. I wanted just to um, go over a couple of other definitions. Sorry, okay. I'm, I'm running That's away. Okay, that's actually fine. No. Um, we define physical inactivity is not just not um, being very active. It's about not meeting these physical activity guideline recommendations, which are generally set at 150 minutes of what we call moderate physical activity. So that's achieving physical activity with an energy expenditure level of a certain value. Um, it's three met, so it's three times our resting energy expenditure of when we're just sitting down. Okay. So physical inactivity so is not the same thing as sedentary behavior, which is defined as sitting down with a low energy expenditure value. You've covered quite a lot of definitions where it's uh, within the physical activity literature, obviously these are terms get, that gets bended around. 
Um, so how do we know um, sort of which ones do we actually measure or we are interested in in terms of um, perhaps even either research studies or even in clinical practice? Oh, that's a very good um, question. And I think it's one of those things that depends, depends what you're looking at. Um, and there's a lot of reasons why you might be interested in physical activity, um, either from a research or a clinical point of view. You might be um, you might be interested in how well your, your client or your research participant is getting out and about, just how much in general walking or um, general habitual physical activity that they're doing in their daily lives. Or we might be very much more interested in um, how much they're meeting the physical activity guidelines or how much exercise they're doing, in which case you want to be able to measure the intensity of that physical activity as well as just the amount that people are doing. So there are um, different ways that you can look at measuring it. Um, in terms of whether it's possible to measure it, um, the answer is yes. But you kind of need to understand that you can't measure all of the components or all of the things that go up to make physical activity with one measurement tool. Um, and so mostly these things are a compromise of some description where you, you put a monitor on and you're going to be able to measure some aspects of people's movements or physical activity, but you're not going to be able to measure everything. Okay, so we can, so there are only certain aspects that we can actually measure in terms of the physical activity. And of course, as you said, that depends on what you, what, what aspects of it that you are interested in. So what are some of the ways that we can actually measure physical activity objectively? So I would say most of the um, objective measurements of physical activity use what's called an accelerometer, um, which is worn on the body somewhere. Um, historically, they used to be worn um, around the waist, but they, you can also wear them on the wrist, like the Fitbit. You can wear them on the, on the ankle sometimes. Um, some of the research ones are worn on the front of the thigh. Uh, the accelerometer, um, as, as uh, it, uh, impl the name implies, measures acceleration. And it really looks at two things. It can measure the amount of movement your body's doing, the acceleration. As you move around, you're accelerating up, you're accelerating down. And effectively, the amount of jiggle that you do, the amount of movement, the volume of movement that you're doing. And the higher the acceleration, the more intense that movement is, the more you're waving your arms around, the more you're walking around. The other thing you can do with acceleration is measure um, the inclination of that um, accelerometer. So gravity is an, uh, an acceleration and it's always a constant value and it's pointing towards the ground. So what you can, um, you can do is look at the component of um, gravity that is going through that uh, accelerometer, depending on how, how it is in relation to straight down. And, and that way you can measure the inclination of the bit that it's put on. That's in, more important for things like when it's worn on the front of the thigh, where often they use it to look at sedentary behaviour, the difference in posture between sitting and standing. Um, your thigh moves from an almost horizontal position to an almost vertical one. That's a very distinct change in inc inclination, and it can be used um, to look for that kind of thing. Um, okay. But most so, of the commercial ones will, will look at um, acceleration in terms of the movement of the part. So what you essentially are saying is that all these accelerometer-based activity monitor uses the um, downward pointing using gravity as a reference point, after which any movements away from that reference point, it will clock it as a um, probably a change, and therefore we can use that as a measure of something has moved and therefore thus implying there's a physical activity going on. Yes, that's essentially it. Mm -hmm. um, every monitor has its own different way of working out um, physical activity outcomes from the acceleration. Not all of them will use that inclination, but, but those are the two components that go together to make um, an outcome measure. Um, okay. So now we know how a lot of these physical activity monitors work, mainly, well, most of them work on the basis of accelerometers. Is it possible just to slap on, let's say, a Fitbit and see how many steps we take and take that as an indication of physical activity? I think the basic answer to that is, is yes, but it does depend how accurate you want your, your step count to be. Um, 
a lot of these monitors, and that does include the research grade ones as well. When you look uh, against direct observation, um, when you do a calibration study, the number of steps recorded will not be the same as the number of steps you see. Um, how big that difference is um, varies from monitor to monitor. I don't actually know offhand for the Fitbit, but my, my understanding is it's not brilliant. Um, it might be several hundred steps out across the course of a day for, for a normal person. But then you need to think about what, what your purpose is. If you want to do this as a research study where you want to precisely know exactly how many steps someone takes, then you might stand back and, and, and try and find a monitor that, that it more closely approximates that. But if you are giving it out to a client who, where you want to know roughly what they do, or you want to look at progress over time, then if they're using the same monitor, then um, then you're going to see if they if they take more steps. Generally, um, it'll record more steps, and that that'll go up. And the other thing is um, for epidemiological type studies, you can order people by the number of steps they take. Um, so as long um, as people don't walk in different ways and affect the number of steps taken like that, um, then you 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 generally get the people who take more steps measure more steps on the fitbit so yeah. it can it can be uh, very useful from that point of view i think what you just said brings us very nicely into what i'm going to ask you for my next question which is for the you you described about some of the more commercial as well as the more research grade type physical activity monitors now for the met, for these equipment that you described if they defer with each other in terms of a few hundred steps. How valid and reliable are they in terms of, in, is it enough for us to actually to trust it at all? I'd be out of a job if I said you can't trust them at all. But I do think <laughs> it is important to be aware that these things are likely to be 100% accurate. Um, that they do vary in the amount of <laughs> of, of accuracy that they have um some some will underestimate more than others um some might overestimate if you are looking at studies or you are seeing um clients and giving out um mono or, or they're using their own trackers and they have different types then it's important to know that they might behave differently one might overestimate by 100 steps one might underestimate by 200 steps so if you're then comparing these people and saying oh that person does 300 more steps you, you can't necessarily say that's because they did 300 more steps it might be down to the monitor but if you're using the same monitor then you can look at, at changes over time um, and it def it, it comes down to how accurate you want to be we've been talking a lot about step count and that of course only measures walking mm. or running that's mostly what we do in terms of physical activity is mo walking and running based activities. So for most of what we want to do, that is perfectly reasonable. But if you're interested in how much cycling someone does, how often they go to the gym and, and pull weights, if they go swimming, because a lot of these things aren't waterproof, um, then you act, then you need a different type of monitor. You want to be a different type of output. Um, and when I say you want a different type of monitor, there's a lot of them don't measure that kind of thing. So actually at that point um maybe you fall back on a questionnaire or something like that if that's a specific thing you want to address assess so what you're trying to say here is that currently there is um most of the physical activity monitors mainly just measure walking as a indication of when people start to move but there isn't any very much that has been designed for other forms of activity <laughs> I think that's probably the current state and certainly the current state of commercial monitors at the moment. Okay. I think if you if you're looking forward um, to where this might go, then um, the research type of accelerometers will measure it, um, will give their output in terms of what's known as raw acceleration. You basically get millions of data points of what the acceleration is um, 30, 40, 50 times a second over the course of the week that someone wears it that's a lot of data mm. and what um, people are doing now is using um, very sophisticated techniques to try and look at that data to try and classify activity to try and classify intensity of activity in um, 
I say more sophisticated ways than have been till now. Until now, often people have just used a, have used a threshold. Um, they'll have based that on a calibration study where they get people to wear like an oxygen monitor to measure energy expenditure. They get them to do particular activities and then they link up what the accelerometer output was with those activities and they try and draw thresholds about what counts as moderate activity, what counts as vigorous physical activity. But the the idea of using artificial intelligence techniques, neural networks to try um, to um, perhaps be a bit more sophisticated about uh, using the um, the analysis that, that's going into that. Um, it won't just look at, at the value of physical activity, uh, the value of acceleration, sorry, and, and, and compare it to a threshold. It'll look at how much um, variability there is. It might look um, at, at, at uh, they, they, they generally um, calculate a whole range of outputs based on that, you know, maybe 20 or 30, and then use the computer to try and filter out what's important about that. And then people maybe are trying to look at picking out activities such as, say, cycling, um, as opposed to walking. Mm. That's actually quite exciting to hear that um, people are starting to use AI to actually do some of these prediction and modeling of these physical activity sort of um, measurements. And I mean, given the interest in AI across the world right now, I, I think that will yeah. be something probably quite exciting. Now, we talked about the different types of both um, research grade um, uh, uh, sort of um, physical activity monitors. Now, I, I understand that you are obviously um, an engineer in background, but I know I, I also know that you have worked with a lot of clinicians in helping to design clinical studies. So now, what is the best method to measure physical activity objectively in a clinical setting from your perspective? Again, I do tailor my advice depending on what specifically people want to use. And there's a lot of um, decisions that go into that. Mm -hmm. um, one of the questions is whether you want your participant to be able to have feedback, um, whether you want them to be able to see what you're measuring about their behavior or whether you don't. Um, the argument for not wanting it is you want to know what they're doing without them reacting to that. But for some interventions, then feedback is part of that behavior change. And so you do need um, them to be able to see it. And it depends. Um, that some devices will allow you access to that. Fitbit, for example, and then um, a lot of the research grade ones require the data to be downloaded before you see it. So um, they wouldn't allow you access to the feedback. Um, another uh, thing is about how in bothered you are about accurately measuring sedentary behavior. Um, it's often because sedentary behavior has a postural component to it, whether you're sitting or reclining um, it's not just not moving very much if you're standing still up and still you're not sedentary but you're not moving very much so if you use an accelerometer which doesn't have a, a postural measure in it so often if they're if they're worn on the wrist or they're worn on the hip um, that won't come into it um, and I'll give an example of a research one which is the actigraph which doesn't do that um, it uses low movement to define sedentary behavior and for a lot of that it will characterize some standing as sedentary behavior. Um, I use another research grade um, monitor called the active pal which is worn on the front of the thigh and because it uses the inclination of the thigh it can accurately uh, or much more accurately determine the difference between sitting and standing. So if you're if you're concerned about measuring sedentary behavior accurately then you really need to be looking at um, a monitor on the thigh. However, they are, um, it's perceived that people are less interested in wearing that, that it's harder to wear. Um, you, you have to get buy-in from people and, and wearing something on the wrist or just clipping something onto the waist can, uh, can be um, seen as an easier way in, an easier sell to your participants, just wear this for, the, for a week. So, especially if you've got um, participants you think are maybe going to be hard to reach or not particularly interested, then maybe you don't want to go for the best measure of say, posture because you, you need the people to actually wear the monitors. 
Okay. That's very interesting because obviously different monitors will have different characteristics that can, that can that we can actually then tailor it to what the clinical study or perhaps the clinic actually requires. Now we've actually talked about the different types of accelerometers as well as the physical activity monitors, and you have alluded a little bit to the answer to my next question, which is, what in your opinion is the future of physical activity measurement? You talked about a little, a little bit about AI. And so what are, are, are the other things that you think might be the future of physical activity measurements? I, I think there's a, a several different directions that can go in. So one, as I, as I said, for research is looking at the raw acceleration signal and getting more sophisticated with this AI techniques to, to classify more acti activity or more activity more accurately. I do think that wearables, activity trackers that people use are potentially going to be a big thing in the future. Um, a lot of people use them, a lot of people upload the data, it's available, at least to these companies, in large quantities. It's very messy data, lots of different devices, people don't always wear it, they, 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 they you know, it's, it's lots of different algorithms within the, the device, it's giving different outputs. But because there's so much of it, there's something to be gained at the scale of, of general behaviour of people. Um, using these monitors. And I think there's potential for some very interesting work to come out of that. And then the other thing where I think there's um, a lot of potential is um, about using them for interventions or integrating measurement into an intervention. So for example, as a, as a way of feeding back to people or motivating people to do be more physically active as part of a behavior change intervention. I think there's a lot of potential for that um, moving forward. Mm. Well, I think that was a great sort of conclusion to the discussions we've just had. And I really enjoyed our chat about um, objective physical uh, activity measurement. Philippa, thank you so much for being a part of this interview. It's a pleasure. Thank you.